This is Echinodorus, beautiful, healthy and very beneficial for your tank. And so is this. And that. In fact, all those plants you can see here are different kinds of Echinodorus. So, if you are looking for beautiful, beginner-friendly plant that will also help you with fighting algae, stick around. Because today I will show you many different types of Echinodorus and tell you everything I know about growing them and keeping them healthy. Echinodorus plants come in many different forms and you will have lots of plants to choose from. There are over 30 types of Echinodorus with different sizes, shapes and even colors. You can get tiny Echinodorus tenulus like this one, perfect plant for nano tanks or fronts of bigger aquariums and also a very good choice for a nice carpeting plant, for example for the front of your tank. If you are aiming for something bigger, for the middle section of the tank, Magdalensis is a great choice. Or maybe you're looking for something really big. How about this amazing looking Cordifolius? Just look at those leaves, they look magnificent. And trust me, the camera doesn't really show how green and beautiful those leaves really are. Speaking of leaves, here Echinodorus also gives you many options. Something narrow? There you go. Narrow and big? Sure. Wherever you have small nano tank or large aquascape, there is an Echinodorus species that will fit there perfectly. But now let's go over my Echinodorus care guide, which I divided into five main parts. Let's start from lighting. Echinodorus generally do well with medium to high light intensity. I personally keep the light for 8 hours a day. Any longer than that doesn't give those plants any benefits, but raises the chance for algae development. If you are looking for the types with red leaves, like for example hot pepper or rubin, your light would have to be stronger and you might need to use CO2. But for all green varieties, I keep them in low tech setups. And they are just doing great. But this is because of my second point, substrate. In my opinion, this is the absolute key to keep the echinodors healthy. Those plants are very heavy root feeders and need nutrient-rich substrate. Preferably active soil with few additional root taps directly under the plants. You might think that is even too much, but no, trust me. Very rich substrate is an absolute must. So they are kind of a total opposition of, for example, Anubias plants. If you will create substrate suitable for Echinodorus, it will grow very big, very fast. But if you will plant them in sand with no extra nutrients, you will run into issues. And those issues cannot be fixed with my next point. Liquid fertilization. For Echinodorus, I don't use any. Seriously. It's much easier to grow those plants with proper maintenance of the substrate, meaning that every few months I put new root tabs under the substrate to keep the nutrient level high, but I don't increase nutrient level in the watering column just for those plants. And this is what makes them very good for beginners. It's much easier to control nutrient levels in the substrate rather than in water. And if you combine this with their fast growth, you have an excellent algae fighting plant. And here you can see the example of that. Very nutrient rich substrate, huge plants, quite strong light, but no algae. No sign of it. 
Next, water parameters. Echinodorus is quite adaptable and don't have any special requirements. In general, just keep the water between 22 and 28 degrees Celsius, pH between 6.5 and 7.5, and your plants will be just fine. I kept at least 10 different types of Echinodorus in water like that, and it was always successful. And my last point regarding Echinodorus is about their maintenance. In my opinion, it's much more important in case of Echinodorus than with other plants. Regular pruning is quite important for them, so try to trim any yellowing or dead leaves as soon as you notice them. It will promote new growth and prevent them from rotting in the tank. Remember that they are often very big and have big leaves. So this amount of dead leaf matter might influence your water quality. Luckily, this kind of maintenance is very easy and very fast. And now I would like to give you few warnings about mistakes that can be easy made with Echinodorus. First of all, size. One of the common mistakes with Echinodorus is not considering their growth size. Yes, of course, there are many small Echinodorus types, I mentioned this myself, but you need to know exactly what you're planting. Most common species are really big and grow really dense, but when you buy them, they don't look that impressive. So, you need to plan ahead and leave them some space in your tank for their final shape and size. Next point is about nutrient deficiency. Yes, I know, I mentioned this already, but you should really watch for signs of nutrient deficiencies. Those plants are especially prone to iron deficiency, which makes their leaves turn yellow. If you see that happening, you should immediately add more root taps into your substrate. I also like those kind of clay balls, like this one. Putting them directly under bigger Echinodorus is a very good idea and helps those plants a lot with their development. And my final warning is about fish. Incompatible fish. Very common mistake made by beginners. I think that because of their size, many people assume that Echinodorus leaves are very strong, like Anubias. But no. They are quite thin and can be delicate. And many fish, like big chiclets, can damage those leaves very easily. And plecos, oh my, they are basically Echinodorus destroyers. Especially those bigger kinds, like Amazon swords. So sorry, but if you like both those things, you're gonna have to select just one. Plecos or Big Echinodorus. And now a few words about propagation. Echinodorus propagates relatively easily and quite fast. The most common way they propagate is through runners. Runners are horizontal stems that grow out of the base of mother plant. And along those runners, you're gonna see smaller versions of those plants. Here you can see a very nice example. You can just leave those runners in the tank and they will just keep growing. Or you can cut and remove them. And later you can cut this big horizontal stem into smaller pieces and replant those smaller plants wherever you want. What I like to do is grow those little plants immersed. I created a dedicated video on how to propagate Echinodorus, where I explain entire process and list all the benefits of doing that. So if you are interested, you will find the link to that video in the description. So there you have it. Echinodorus are beautiful plants for any type of aquarium. They are not difficult to care for, come in many different shapes and sizes, 
they grow fast and therefore keep the algae in check. All they need is good light and nutrient-rich substrate. If you have any more tips or suggestions about how to care for Echinodorus, leave them in the comments below because we can all benefit from it. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, it really helps me out. For more aquarium tips and guides, consider subscribing if you haven't already. But for now, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.